సెవెన్ సిక్స్ ఫైవ్ ఫోర్ త్రీ టూ వన్ జీరో ప్లస్ వన్ ప్లస్ టూ ప్లస్ త్రీ ప్లస్ ఫోర్ ప్లస్ ఫైవ్ ప్లస్ సిక్స్ ప్లస్ సెవెన్ ప్లస్ ఎయిట్ ప్లస్ నైన్ ప్లస్ టెన్ సెకండ్స్ ఆటో ట్రాకింగ్ రాకెట్ లిఫ్టింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద లాంచ్ ప్యాడ్ ఈజ్ ఎ మ్యాగ్నిఫిసెంట్ సైట్ ఇస్ ఎన్ ఇట్ దిస్ వన్ ఈస్ ప్రాబబ్లీ క్యారియింగ్ ఎ శాటిలైట్ that goes around the earth taking photos or helps people around the globe communicate with each other but have you ever thought about how such rockets are built or launched it is the result of the collective hard work of a large number of scientists engineers and technicians a satellite launch vehicle is actually much bigger than how it seems from a distance Our PSLV is about 45 meters tall and 3 meters in diameter. The GSLV is even taller at 49 meters. Just how big is 49 meters? Well, it's about the size of a 15-storied building. Imagine that. The size of a rocket usually depends on the size of the satellite it needs to carry. At the time of liftoff, our GSLV Mark 3 rocket weighs about 640 tons that is equal to the weight of about 160 elephants that is indeed massive isn't it building such tall massive machines is indeed not a simple task usually a rocket is designed with multiple stages Most rockets in the world have between 2 and 4 such stages. Each stage consists of rocket engines, the fuel for the engines, fuel tanks and the electronic equipment needed for its operation and control. Building a rocket starts with building each of its stages. Depending on the type of fuel used, Rocket stages can be generally classified as solid fuel stages and liquid fuel stages. For making a solid fuel stage, the chemical components of the fuel are mixed and filled inside the rocket structure. This process is called motor casting. One advantage of such solid stages is that they can be made ready for launch in a short period of time. Liquid fuel stages are more complex and needs to be handled with care, but they are generally more efficient than solid stages. Fuel tanks, pumps, engines, gas vessels etc. are the main parts of a liquid rocket stage. Some liquid engines can even be tested on the ground by firing them using a small amount of propellant before using it to build rocket stage. After building a rocket stage, the next big milestone is its testing. Experts from different groups check each and every component of the stage using a pre-decided test plan. After the results of the tests are verified to be correct and normal, the rocket stage can be integrated with other stages to build the complete rocket. Building a rocket mainly involves the interconnection of different rocket stages. This process is known as vehicle integration. Rocket integration begins with the assembly of the first stage on the launch pad. When the rocket stages are stacked one over the other, the precise alignment between them is very important. Stacking of such huge and heavy rocket stages happens inside a big building called the Vehicle Assembly Building. 
This building has heavy lifting cranes and other facilities for working with rocket stages. At every stage of integration of the rocket, the health of all systems need to be tested and verified. This process is called checkout. Leak checks of fuel tanks, testing of engine control systems, etc., are some of the most important parts of this process. Finally, after the rocket is fully assembled and its proper health is confirmed, the satellite is integrated with it. Once the launch vehicle is fully integrated, it is moved to the launch pad. Final preparations for launch and filling of liquid fuels happen at the launch pad. Preparing a rocket for launch is a very complex and elaborate process. Therefore, these activities are performed based on a pre-decided plan called the countdown sequence. You might have noticed a countdown from 10, 9, 8 and so on to 0 in launch videos. Those are the last few seconds of the countdown sequence. Filling of liquid fuels and various gases, testing of rocket batteries, and final checks of the control systems are some of the critical operations done in the countdown sequence. Filling of liquid fuels is done through special pipelines provided at the launch pad. You can probably imagine that this is a very dangerous process. That is why all such operations are done remotely from a safe place using special command and monitoring systems. All operations on the rocket at the launch pad are performed remotely from a place called the launch control center. Here, scientists and engineers use special computers to monitor the health of the launch vehicle and to prepare it for launch. The last few minutes of the countdown is very critical as it involves a large number of operations that are to be performed flawlessly. This job is done by a computer program called the Automatic Launch Sequence. This program configures all components of the vehicle for launch, checks their health and if everything is perfect, gives the ignition command for liftoff. The condition of the atmosphere at the time of launch is very important. The speed and direction of winds can affect the performance of the rocket. Therefore, on the launch day, measurement of wind speed and directions are made using balloons and the rocket's flight is adjusted accordingly.
once the rocket lifts off from the launch pad, we get data about its performance using an onboard electronic system known as telemetry. The rocket continuously transmits data that is received by a network of receiving stations on Earth. This data is transmitted live to the control center so that scientists and engineers can assess the rocket's performance. Once the rocket lifts off from the launch pad, it flies completely on its own till it reaches its intended destination. We cannot control or change the path of the rocket. Now what if the rocket has some serious problem and begins to stray from its path? Fear not, there is a way to make sure the rocket does not cause any safety problems. We can send a command to the rocket from the ground to destroy it. This destruct command is the only action we can perform on the rocket once it starts flying. The rocket is a very complex machine. For it to lift off and fly correctly and reach its target requires perfect functioning of all its components. In order to ensure this, we need precise and fault-free integration and checkout operations. Building and launching of rockets is a perfect example of teamwork. Scientists, engineers and technicians from different domains all come together and work relentlessly towards one common goal. And this is what results in a successful mission.